Alright folks, I wanted to make a quick video here talking a little bit about preppers, prepping, and mistakes that uh, preppers typically make. Um, we're going to go through 10 of them in particular. But before we do that, why don't you go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back, and we'll get started. Okay, hopefully everybody made it back, and in this video I'm not giving any advice, I'm just talking about my perspective on prepping. That being said, keep in mind that I am not a doomsday prepper, an expert prepper, or prepper um, professional, any of that kind of stuff. I'm just a regular guy who considers himself to be a prepping enthusiast, and uh, I'm sure that some of these uh, mistakes that I'm going to point out may spark debate. Now, like I said, I'm not an expert prepper. I'm not a know-it-all. I don't know everything, and I've made a lot of these mistakes, and I by no means am fully prepped. I'm just on a journey to become more prepared in the event that something happens. And I think that that's probably true of most of you guys and most of the YouTube prepping community. So the first thing I want to talk about is nourishment. When I say nourishment, I mean food and water. And I think a lot of people fall down in this in this area. It's like, do you have enough food? Do you have enough water? Um, and that's sustainable food and water, food that you're going to eat, not dehydrated food that you need water to eat. So your your food store, your food cache should be a bunch of different things, right? It should be canned goods. It could be freeze dried food. It could be stuff that's uh, preserved. It could be stuff that's in a in a deep freeze. It it, it could be a lot of different things. But it also could be an orchard or the ability to source food via hunting and trapping. And, you know, when you start to talk about a SHTF or a prepping scenario, you got to determine what's right for you and your family. Do you need food for a week? Do you need two weeks? Do you need a month? Do you want six months? Do you want two years? you, you got to figure that out, and then you got to figure out how many calories you want. And they need to be good calories. You, you can't expect to just eat white rice for every meal for two years straight and be healthy, right? And then uh, the other part of that I talked about was water. So it's good to have stored water, you know, bottled water on hand for the power outage that comes for the weekend or you get trapped for a snowstorm or something like that. But you also need a way to collect water. You need to purify water. And again, you, you know, do you, need, do you need a week, two weeks, a month, six months? How, how much water do you need? How many people are you going to be taking care of? And are you expecting other people to come to your house and, and want to drink your water? And so I, I, I see a lot of videos where people are like, hey, I went to the dollar store and I bought peanut butter and tuna fish. And I just don't know if that's if that's realistic or not. And, and so as a result, I, I see uh, people making videos where or, or talking about or publishing on forums their food and water or their nourishment requirements. And, uh, you know, thinking that they have that covered. And I'm not, not exactly sure they do. The uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was security. And, th and the reason I wanted to talk about that is, is that you know, if you're going to bug in or even bug out, you need a mechanism to protect yourself, and that's from all kinds of things. Uh, when we when you talk about you know survival scenarios or shit hits the fan or so, something bad happening, you know, really look at this classification system of the different types of people that you're going to encounter, right? And that's going to be protectors, predators, parasites, and producers. And when you talk about security, you, that you're talking about protectors. You're going to protect yourself, your family, your friends. And what a lot of people do is they'll go out and they'll buy, you know, $3,000 AR and put night optics on it and, and, and trick it out. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but maybe you need a couple of different firearms, a pistol, AR, shotgun, target rifle, long-range rifle, uh, 22. And then you got to make sure that you know how to maintain those weapons, you have enough ammunition for them, that other people know how to use them. You're going to need to harden your house, right? You need a security system. I guess you don't need one. You might want one. You might want the ability to board your windows up, maybe set up a neighborhood or a property perimeter, have some some type of advanced alerting system. Maybe you want dogs. You know, what we'll see is, is somebody will be like, or there's a guy I work with, and he's like, man, I got me an AR and a thousand rounds. Fuck it. I don't need nothing else. And, I, and I'm just like, I, you know, to me that seems a little bit short-sighted. Um, the third thing that I had on the list was uh, power, right? And we, and, and we talk about... When we talk about power, you know, if you, you could lose power because of a snowstorm or a hurricane or grid down or solar flare or magnetic pulse and any of that stuff. You know, again, you need to you need to consider 
you know, how much power do you want? How much power do you need to, you know, at the, at the first level, do you not have enough batteries to run all of your electronics? Do you have long-term batteries like uh, lithium ions or lead sealed batteries that you can recharge uh, without the grid? Can you charge them off the sun? Do you have a generator? Do you have gasoline? Do you have, you know, do, do you have, are you recycling your gasoline? Uh, maybe you got a turbine or, or wind, I don't know. But, uh, you know, again, I, I think it's a mistake where people underestimate their power needs, their power requirements, and they don't, they don't prep accordingly. The uh, fourth thing I had on my list was I wanted to talk a little bit about alternative currency. And you hear a lot of people talk about how they're going to barter. And uh, one of the things I see a lot in videos is people have these large silver cash, caches, right? And, and when you go back to the different types of people that we're going to encounter, right, protectors, predators, parasites, and producers, um, I would be really concerned about predators and parasites, right? If, if I need a gallon of gas, right, and then, you know, I'm trying to negotiate with somebody and, hey, I'll give you this $20 silver coin or, or, or whatever it is. I mean, I, I don't necessarily want to be walking around in a without rule of law or a high dangerous uh, scenario with shiny bag of silver. To me, that makes you a target, right? And then predators will try to take that from you or parasites will try to get that from you somehow. Now, people talk about ammunition as an alternative currency. And again, um, you know, hey, that guy's got ammo. How are we going to get it from him? Uh, you know, maybe cash. You see people storing cash. You'll see people with their bug out bags and have 500 bucks in there. Uh, for me, paper currency is going to be worthless. People talk about hoarding uh, hard liquor like vodka and, and using that as a barter system. I think that probably makes some sense. Or medical supplies. Maybe you're going to, you're going to barter with that. But. I think it's a mistake for people to, you know, not really look at alternative currency, barter items, and then having a wide variety of things that people might want. I mean, if it's a really dangerous scenario where, without rule of law, I, I could care less about paper currency. I could care less about silver or gold. And I, I, at that point, I'm thinking supplies. So, you, you know, you need to make sure that you have enough supplies for everything that you need plus things that other people might need so you can trade for something else. Uh, you know, the next thing, number five on my list, was really around education. And, and I'm not talking about book learning. I'm not talking about high school or college or any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about, you know, do you know how to procure, source, grow food? Do you know how to purify water? Do you know how to build a shelter? Do you know how to uh, take care of wounds or somebody who's sick? Uh, it, it's those, those kind of things, and really, when you think about it, the uh, number of topics and the and the depth of all those topics are huge. Uh, and I I, th I don't I don't really see a lot of times, you know, we talk about people like man that guy's an expert. He's a he's an expert prepper. I'm sure if you sit down and you do an inventory of somebody's skill sets, their capabilities, and their knowledge, you're you're going to find you're going to find gaps. And so I guess my point. This is that if you really want to be a prepper who really can take care of themselves for a medium to long term scenario, and I'm talking like two months to two years, somewhere right around there, you better know about electricity, carpentry, you better know about thermal dynamics, food, water, agriculture, hunting, trapping. Um, the, the list is endless, and you know, it's a lifetime, it's a constant quest to build skill sets like, like shelter building, fire building. Um, it it really will take you, you, you could never stop learning, right? So you constantly have to keep going after the, it's education, grabbing and learning and growing. The uh, the sixth thing is something that I really see a lot of uh, deficiencies when I hear people talk about prepping or, or when they talk about bug out bags and stuff like that. And that's really first aid and medical. And, and I think a lot of it is, is that people always plan to be successful. They don't plan to fail, right? And so what if you break your leg? You know, and I'm not trying to be a what if ninja or any of these what if scenario guys because I'm not into that. But you know, if if you require medication, like if you're diabetic and you need insulin, or if, you know, you have some kind of kidney problem or liver problem, and and, and you need reoccurring medicine, how much are you going to stockpile? How are you going to stockpile prescription medication? You just can't go and buy it. I mean, I guess you buy it on black market. You need to make sure that it's stored properly. That it. Uh, you know, that it's accessible, that, that you have a means to, to administer the medicine. And then also there's all kinds of things, you know, when you don't have the ability to go to the doctor, run up to the pharmacy, you're going to need fever reducers, you're going to need pain medicine, you're going to need um, your anti-diarrheals, nausea. There, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. Antibiotics, like how, how are you going to do that? Are you, and that goes back to the, to the education. So can you really 
really go and buy fishy antibiotics and know which ones to use for what kind of ailments, right? And, and so I, th- I think that people really need to talk about and think about strengthening their, their first aid or medical capabilities um, in the event if shit hits the fan. The, the, the seventh is, is communications. And a lot of times a mistake I'll see is, is that somebody will be like, well, I bought me some GMRS radios or I bought me a Balfang and I'm ready to rock and roll, I'm ready to go. And it's like, Communications is so much more than that. I mean, you, you need AM and FM reception capabilities, shortwave capabilities to be able to get news, information uh, about what's going on from, from distances far away, right? I mean, you, you really want to have a, 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 a international, well, I don't say international, but you really want to have a regional reach. So let's just say there's something going on in the, uh, I, I don't know, say the Gulf of Mexico, right, where we had like the New Orleans stuff. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if with uh, WRL really broke out and there was a when they had that big hurricane, if you could listen to news sources from five hundred thousand miles away to really understand what was going on, and then you also want to talk about bidirectional communication. So if you have people that are in your group or people that you're planning to bug out with or bu- bug in with, I mean, you're going to want FMRS or GMRS capabilities for very short range communications. We talked about security perimeters. Um, you could use some ham radios like the Balfangs, a two meter or seventy centimeter. But again, if you want to communicate long range, you're going to have to start talking about six, ten, twenty, forty, sixty meters, uh, high frequency capabilities. And you, know, you just don't buy a radio and say, "I'll figure out how to use this when 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 it when it breaks down." I mean, you really want to make sure that you have ability to communicate, uh, you know, point to point, read locally, uh, regionally via repeaters. Uh, a lot of them have emergency power. And if you're somebody who just jumps on there and you're like, hey, man, hey, man, I got, I got a problem. You know, those things are constructed around communities of people who generally know each other. And, and I don't think that they're going to take kindly to somebody who's just trying to, you know, jam up airways and learning how to use their, their Balfang radio. And then also, if you wanted to communicate, um, you know, nationally, beyond a regional level or internationally, you're going to need HF stuff. And you need to know about antennas and power sources and protocol and etiquette and and how to tune in signals i mean it's 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 not a joke it's a lot of stuff um again and that kind of falls into the education thing but you you need this communications equipment and it, you know it's not cheap and it's not easy to to work and you don't want to have you don't want to be the only guy right like in your group or your community you want everybody to have that skill set that equipment and that capability uh the eighth thing i have on the list is a bug out strategy and I, th- I talked a little bit about this in a video I made called Bug Out Mistakes or 10 Bug Out Mistakes. And, then, you know, you have a lot of these people who think they're just going to grab their bag and hit the woods and be good to go. They're going to be a lone wolf or, you know, they don't know where they're going to go or how they're going to get there. And, you know, for me, bugging out is a last resort. It's not it's not the first option. And, and I think a lot of we have like these bushcraft Rambo types that just, you know, I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to eat tree bark and, and, and uh, dandelion tea or whatever it is. And, you know, you really need to have a, a plan that's executable, that's practiced, that will get you from point A to point B. Hopefully that's a predefined uh, destination. If you just if you just head out, right, and no place to go, you become a refugee. And, and the, the life that you're going to experience as a refugee is going to be significantly difficult. Um, so you really need a plan. You really need a strategy. You need to work with a group of people. You need to have understanding of where you're going to go how you're going to get there, how you're going to protect yourself, how you're going to feed, clothe, shelter, all that stuff. And, and I don't think that uh, people work that out. And that kind of you know, that kind of goes into point number nine that I have, and that's really around community, right? And, and it goes away from that, hey, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a bushcraft Rambo, I'm a lone wolf, you know, I'm a guy, for, I, can, I can take on the world, I can do this on my own, I'm, I'm, you know, it's going to be me versus everybody. It doesn't sound like a very good plan, and it, it certainly would be nice. In, in the old days, people knew their neighbors; they knew who was around them. You know, in this in a, in a post-apocalyptic, for lack of a better word, world, you know, you're going to go back to protectors, predators, parasites, and producers. I want to make sure that I'm aligned and my family's aligned to people who are protectors and that are producers, right? And that have like-minded interests and have prepared the, themselves, right? So they're not going to they're not going to be parasites wanting. Hey, I heard you have water. And, that, and they're not going to be like, you know, hey, give me your alternative currency, whatever that is. I, I, that's not who I want to be around. I, I, I want to know my neighbors. I want to know my prepper group. I want to have a community that I can depend on. Uh, you know what? I'll watch your back. You watch my back. Um, and I don't, I don't think that a lot of people have that. I mean, you have scenarios where people don't even talk to their neighbors, right, and, or, 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 or even know who they are. Um, 
it seems like that's a bad scenario. And the last thing, and this is actually probably the most controversial of them all, is I, I uh, put down this as quality gear. You know, I see a lot of people with a lot of shit, and, uh, and I'm not saying that you need to have top-of-the-line gear, you need the best gear, you need, you know, boss-level gear. Uh, and I'm not even saying you, you don't make compromises, you know, according to your budget and your and your needs. Maybe we'll, you'll buy uh, high value, but just don't buy cheap crap, right? When, when I see people who talk about, you know, their bug-out knife is, is the, uh, you know, $3 Walmart knife, I, I start to think to myself, wow, that thing is going to dull, it's going to break, it's not going to last, it's, you know, you know, I start to think that that might not be the, the best decision. Um, you see people who buy these backpacks that are pretty crappy, right? They're not going to be comfortable, they're not going to be durable, they're not going to hold up. And again, I'm not saying you need to buy the best backpack, but, you know, it, I think that the rule is, is that you become penny wise and pound foolish. You know, you buy once, cry once. And I, and I don't want to resort to cliche thinking because I don't, I don't think that that is, uh, is healthy. But uh, you want to make sure that, that you're buying quality stuff that, listen, I mean, your life, your friends, your family's lives are all going to depend on this stuff. So, you know, if you look at a product that costs $8, uh, you know, that you can get because it's the cheapest one, and then you look at another product that maybe is $12, maybe you figure out a way to save up that, that extra money or, or you compromise somewhere else. You know, earlier in the video, I mentioned that, uh, you know, prepping is a lifetime journey. You're not going to be fully prepped in six weeks. You're not going to be fully prepped in two years. Uh, I don't think you're going to be fully prepped in five years. It's a, it's a never-ending cycle where you're constantly trying to get better. And I, and I know that people say, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to hurry up and buy base stuff and, and upgrade later. You're probably better off buying less base stuff of better quality and then growing your your, your capabilities and, and your gear. Um, so that's all ten of them, but I did want to throw a bonus, right, a bonus mistake that people throw in. And that's where they tend to over-focus on one area. And uh, the one that I see the most is really around weapons, right? People think that they're going to be, uh, you know, I don't know, Buck Rogers or the Lone Ranger or something like that. And, you know, their weapons are going to be the answer to every single one of their problems. And uh, listen, man, weapons are important. I, I, I get it. But you need food. You need water. You need power. You need shelter. You need um, community. You need knowledge. You need communications. You need all the other things that we talked about. And I think that sometimes people uh, will focus in on a hobby or one thing that they're comfortable with and not look at other ones. And I think the biggest example of not looking at, as I mentioned earlier, was number six. It was really around first aid and, uh, and medical. And, uh, you know, w what you can do is you take a look at videos that preppers make and the weapon ones, you know, the knives, the guns. Those are things that get all the views. When somebody wants to talk about first aid or they want to talk about, uh, you know, alternative currency or they want to talk about... Um, communications they just don't get the views right so it just shows that what people are not interested in because i guess it's not cool it's not fun i mean trust me going to the range is a lot more fun than going to the cvs and buying band-aids right there's no there's no question about that so anyhow this video is starting to get a little bit long i'm going to go ahead and cut it off uh any comments below are greatly appreciated thank you